Welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the DNS manager, which will allow us to add a domain to our Linode to make it all that much easier to access. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So before we get started, there's a few things that I want to mention. First of all, I set up a new Linode and I'm going to use that as an example for this video. So here in my browser, what I'm going to do is paste in the IP address to my Linode. Now, as you saw, I pasted my IP address in here and it's usually a lot better if we have a DNS domain name instead because nobody's going to remember 172.105.13.22. So I'll show you guys the process of setting up a domain in Linode. But one of the first things we're going to do is set the name servers for the domain to Linode's name servers. But before we can do that though, we need an actual domain name to use and you'll need to register that first. It doesn't matter which registrar you go with, you just need a domain name. Now I have this domain right here, learnlinux.cloud. Now this portion of the walkthrough will be different depending on who your registrar is. So for hover, what I can do is go down here where it says name servers, I can click edit. So what we want to do again is change the name servers over to Linode's name servers. So I'm going to delete this first entry right here. And I will set this to ns1 linode.com and because I'm lazy I'm just going to copy that then I will paste it right here and I will change the one to a two I'll add another one it's pretty cool that it saw that I'm using the syntax and it automatically filled out the third one for me ns3.linode.com let's add a fourth as well as a fifth so these are the five URLs that we will set our name servers to on our domain. So double check these, make sure they look correct, and then save your changes. So the changes are saved. And one thing to keep in mind throughout the entire process is that when it comes to DNS, almost nothing is instant. Some registrars are faster than others, but in some cases, you actually have to wait up to 24 hours for changes to take effect. But when it comes to our registrar, we have made all the changes that we need to make. So there's nothing more that we need to do here. So I can go ahead and close this tab. So now that we have the name server set, we can go ahead and log into Linode. So the next thing that we need to do is click on domains. We'll add a domain. For the domain, you'll just put in whatever your actual domain name is, the one that you've registered, the one that you've added the name service for. So for me, it's learnlinux.cloud. For the start of authority email address, you just put your email address here or the email address of whoever is responsible for the domain. And since this is just a demo, I'll just add that, but you get the idea. And in my case, I'm going to leave the bottom two options here blank. I'll click Create. So now the domain is added. Again, the name servers could take some time to update. We want to keep that in mind, but we can start actually configuring our DNS records right now. So for example, what I'm going to do is scroll down here for a record. An A record is simply an address record this is where you actually attach an IP address to a domain name. So what I'm going to do is add one right now. Now for the host name, you can see the verbiage in light gray. It says host name or at for root. Now here's what that means. If we want to point our domain name in general, the actual domain, in my case, learnlinux.cloud, to a specific IP address, we can simply type at just like that and you can see down here, it's automatically showing our domain. So if I was to add a DNS record like this, then if I was to type in the domain in a browser, it's going to go to whatever IP address I fill in here. Another thing you can do is have a subdomain. So it could be something like this. So in this example, I have blog.learnlinux.cloud, and then I can go ahead and fill in the IP address. And that's perfectly valid. It just depends on the layout that you want and what you want to achieve. So as a quick example, I'm just going to change this to at. And then I'll go down here to IP address. Every Linode has its own public IP address. So you can go ahead and just type that in here. 
and that's the IP address of mine. Now usually it's probably best to leave that as the default, but I'm going to leave a time to live at five minutes so the DNS cache for this domain will expire faster because maybe I might want to move this later, but you get the idea. So I'll click save. And now we have the IP address right here and we have that for the learnlinux.cloud domain. So for that, we're all set. So as you can see here, the learnlinux.cloud domain now points to my WordPress blog, so it appears like everything is working properly. Now, as another example, I can go ahead and change this. I'm more of a fan of subdomains, so what I'm going to do is configure that here. So we'll edit this, type in blog, that'll give us a subdomain, I'll click save, and we should be good to go. So I'll go over here to the other tab, let's refresh this, it probably won't work yet. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, DNS propagation can take some time, and we also have the time to live variable as well that we set to five minutes that also needs to expire. Now while we're waiting, there are a few commands that we can use to actually check the DNS record. And my favorite is dig. And how we can use it is we can use the at symbol. We can point it toward a specific name server. So for example, we can point it to one of the Linode name servers like this one. And then we type the domain that we want to check. So in our case, blog.learnlinux.cloud. And we can see that Linode's name servers have already been updated. We can actually see the new IP address right here. This is the IP address for our Linode. But of course Linode is up to date. We went in the dashboard and we took care of that ourselves. So what we can also do is check a different name server. So for example, I can type in the address for one of Google's name servers and see what they have. And it looks to me like they have the correct IP address right here. So it appears that DNS has actually replicated, so we should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is refresh the page. Let's see what happens. And there we go. So now blog.learnlinux.cloud points to my WordPress Linode. Now back on the Linode dashboard, there's another DNS record that we should probably add. So I'll click right here to add a new record. And what I'm going to add is known as a wildcard domain. And to add that, you simply make the hostname an asterisk just like that. So essentially, a wildcard DNS record will be a match for subdomains that don't exist. I don't know about you, but I'm always mistyping things. And it's good to have something like this when people like me are browsing the net. Because if someone misspells the subdomain, this will actually take them to a specific IP address. And to keep it simple, what I can do is just type in the same IP address for the Linode right here. Just like that, or whatever the IP address of your Linode happens to be. I'll click Save. And now we have a wildcard domain added to our dashboard. So we have successfully configured a domain name for the Linode. But one thing that we should do is set the reverse DNS as well. So let's go to the Linode section here. I'll show you how to do that. And I'll click on the Linode, which is going to be this one right here. And then under the networking tab, we have the IP address right here. We can go over here to the right, click on the three dots here, and then we can click on edit RDNS. And right here, we can go ahead and add the actual domain for this Linode, which again is blog learn Linux cloud just like that and then click save and now we've actually set up reverse DNS as well and that's all there is to it setting reverse DNS is very easy you simply make it the same as your a record it does have to match or you might get an error as long as it is a match and you have it set here then reverse DNS is active now back on the domain section here There's a few other record types that we can actually add that's important to know. Now when it comes to MX records or mail exchanger records, this is for those of you that have decided to run your own email server, or perhaps you've decided to go with a cloud email provider like G Suite. If that's you, you simply fill out the mail server, the preference, the time to live, and so on with the values that are correct for that use case. Now, running your own email server is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Just know that if you do need to configure MX records, you can do that through the Linode dashboard, just like you would for any other DNS record type. Also, we have CNAME records as well. 
And what we can do is go ahead and add one. I'll show you what that looks like. So for the host name, it could be anything you want, and this will be like a subdomain. Essentially, a CNAME record points one domain to another. So you can actually come up with a subdomain, for example, news. And then you can set that to be an alias to another domain. So for example, blog. So now if I was to save this record, if anyone goes to news.learnlinux.cloud, they'll be pointed back to blog.learnlinux.cloud. It'll basically be almost like a redirect. It's effectively an alias. And that could be useful, especially if you want to go ahead and change the name of your site or subdomain. You can actually point the old name to the new name. There's other use cases as well, but this is a record that you will probably create at one point or another. So just know that you can also do this through the dashboard as well. And finally, we have text records. Text records have all kinds of use cases. Most of the time they're used for DNS validation. So if you want to actually use a third party service with your DNS domain, they might ask you to add a specific text record to verify that you own that domain. There's other use cases for text records as well. There's actually some special text records you can add that increase email security. There's all kinds of use cases. But as you can see right here, you can also add text records in the domain section of the Linode dashboard. And this is something that you'll definitely find yourself having to do at one point or another. So there you go. That was an overview of the DNS section of the Linode dashboard. We were able to add a DNS record to the Linode in this example. We saw that it was working, and we also took a look at other DNS record types as well. So at this point, you should have your very own domain attached to your Linode, which will make it all that much easier to access, and you should also understand how to edit DNS settings inside the Linode dashboard. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you click like and subscribe. There's some awesome content coming very soon. So until then, thank you so much for watching.